Oh, to a fly. Welcome back to the Touch Lady on Y254. This time again, we go ahead and discuss everything that has been happening on the world of sport. A little sorry about that technical hiccup on our volumes and sounds, but we are back again. And it is that time run we go ahead and discuss Kenya Premier League match day 18. Kogalo versus Gormaya this afternoon. How good is Dillian Kerr? And leading Gormaya to title glory because they lost it this time round to Tasca FC. During Azia on set, our football writers Kevin Taylor and Ronnie Aloyo Karibuni Sanobana. Thank you. Match day 18. Kevin, do you give it to Gormaya against Moroni? Relegation threatened Moroni youth. Uh, yeah, on paper, Gormaya have an upper hand. Mm -hmm. But the game I saw Moroni play against Sofapaka last weekend mm -hmm. gives me a second thought. They play some good football, but definitely Gormai has an upper hand going into the game. Yeah. And also considering that Moroni youth now in the dugout is Gilbert Celebo, what difference does Celebo bring into the Moroni youth side? Because he has been out of the game for some time now. Went back for sports commentary, came back with the Kakamega Homeboys under 20 team, now he's back in the big boys' corner. Will he help them out? Uh, okay, Celebo's teams play football. Yeah, I, okay, there's no. Uh, he does not have the, 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 he does not do things like defending too much or maybe those upper balls they play he says mm -hmm. yeah so basically uh, some teams may find it very difficult to play against Moron because they play too much of football yes yeah they play football now, Ronnie what do you make of him coming back into the dugout now yeah I think Celeb has shown that his experience you remember he came with lepers back in 2009 when they came back from relegation and although he didn't stay with them quite uh, a longer period he then went to Congo United he's been around for quite some time he really understands the game uh, I also watched uh, Moroni play so far back and we were they were really knocking it around and showed so much quality although they are playing Gormaya Gormaya is a team now in some really good form so they might trouble Gurmaya just a bit, but they, no, they might not really get the three points. Kevin, since the departure of Weekly for Chomo from Moroni Youth to Kakamega Homeboys, the team striking uh, department has been quite blunt of late though last weekend uh, against their uh, KPL fellow opposition. They proved a point, uh, of course, coming up with a point, of course, after sharing spoils by one or. What do you make of the standout players that are likely uh, uh, supposed to determine the outcome of that particular fixture? Uh, basically, first of all, you, uh, Ochomo is a big, big player for Moroni Youth, and uh, it's not easy to replace the goals uh, he scored for them. Uh, as for players who will stand out, Moroni has almost a new team. When you saw the team that played last weekend, it's almost entirely a new team. They have some very good forward uh, strikers they got from Uganda. Uh, okay, can't clearly get their names, but I saw them against Sofapaka. They have some, some good foreign strikers who can cause Gormaya some problems. And probably for Gore, under the new tactician, of course, having rediscovered themselves as they seek probably to win the Ask Stins KPL title after missing out on it last season after Tasca got crowned the champions. What uh, are the exceptional figures in that particular team? Uh, I think one thing that Kerr has done into that team, he has reverted it into a 4-2 four, four formation. Uh, Gore looked at, so uncomfortable playing with a back three uh, at the start of the season under Zimaria before he left. But uh, yeah, I, they are more comfortable now playing with a back four. And uh, standout players, maybe Tuisenge, he scored during the week. All this, the likes of Simbi, Muguna, and the, if he will play, because I hear he skipped training a few days back, if the coach decides he won't play, then someone else maybe might step up. And the likes of Timo the Eternal maybe. And the new coach has just said that it doesn't matter uh, how your name is high profile, but as long as you don't impress him during training, you won't get a uh, first in place in uh, his lineup. Coach, coach Dylan Carr has, has come in and brought many people uh, suggested that with the Maria going suddenly, then things will start going south for Gormaya, but that has not happened. Uh, Dylan Kerr has come in, uh, brought in a whole new energy. You've seen what he's even saying. Uh, recently, he was quoted saying that the players should treat the jersey as, the, as their girlfriends, that, and no player really is assured of a starting position. Last weekend, we also saw a bit of a shift in his starting lineup. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm certain his his coach will certainly uh, deliver for them this season. Uh, particularly also to mention in the standout players, uh, George Blackberry he scored a fantastic goal mm -hmm. last weekend, and uh, most people are really saying George George Blackberry is a player who's not even rediscovering his form, but he's a a player who's always on form. So yes. I think it's really working for God Maya now. It's really working for them. And then one thing we have discovered as we are now going into the last stages of the Kenya Premier League is the top four battle this time round seems to be really tough. We've got Ulenze Stars there. We've got Posta Rangers and Gormaya fighting out between one and two, one point of difference. Posta Rangers seems to be a very good fit to fight Gormaya to the tail end of the season. Uh, there has been this discussion that, uh, especially at the, uh, some, some, sometimes in uh, mid the season, that Posta is a team that uh, that 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 uh, wins in negative fashion. They score one nil, then uh, they defend in numbers and so on and so forth. However, and also again, it was said that Posta doesn't have a striker to get them the title. Mm -hmm. But you see that entire narrative is now changing. Mm -hmm. uh, Posta they got the result against Tasca very comfortably. The very good goal from Atudo. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, I think it's a three man race. Posta is in despite. People saying that they don't have strikers. We've seen goals are coming in from defenders. Mm -hmm. So Posta is also a very, very good side and uh, a formidable position in the rest for the title. Kevin, what do you make of that tie beating Kakamega homeboys against Kariobangi Sharks? Sharks, uh, which is associated with one of the football top punchers in the country, <coughs> seems to have contributed a lot of players to the national team, name of Patila Omoto, Vela Ochieng, and now Victor Majid, I'm reliably informed, is away for some trials overseas probably he will be lucky to get the nod if that's the case we wish him all the best do you think that a uh, contribution of players to the national team will give them morale to beat the opponents kakamega homeboys uh there's a saying that says okay it's, it's said that you don't beat kakamega homeboys at mumia sports complex <laughs> although only one team managed it and that's in so here in this season at mumia sports complex yeah yeah, okay, some teams complain that maybe they use underhand tactics, including playing with the referees, which I, I Ho you cannot prove. witchcraft is not to have no, one of There's no witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> the game against homeboys, I think, uh, oh, uh, homeboys have an uphand to me. Because I watched the first leg play that Machakos three weeks ago. Yes. Uh, homeboys arrived 30 minutes to the game. They did not warm up. They just changed. Check, they were checked and entered the pitch. And they played so well. In fact, I think Sharks su survived homeboy. Now today they are at their backyard. They know that they, they know the playing surface so well. They have the fans behind them. Uh, Sharks su suffered a, de a midweek defeat. They are first in 12 against Suzu. If that go, uh, affects them psychologically, then I see homeboys carrying the day today. But it looks more of a, a draw to me. It's a game that could end even. You tend to subscribe. With yeah, it's a, it's a very it's sentiments. a very tricky match because some boys is very comfortable playing uh, in Mumias. They have the fans. They've, they're used to that playing surface. Mm. But also, Sharks has been playing some very good football. Uh, you've seen the results they've been able to get over the the last couple of days and weeks. Also, em eliminating Sofapaka from the Gotiji. Mm -hmm. And you know, they just they just have a young team really. So I think it's a very, very tight match. I don't expect so many goals. It's it's likely to end in a draw. Mm -hmm. It's and likely to end in a draw. What, what could be happening at Task FC? Because now they have gone five matches without a win. I saw Jackson Mashara being handled the player of the month in a month which you have won nothing. What do you make of Task FC? Uh, it's it's really it's really shocking. I'm surprised just as equally as you are because I expected Tasker to be a top runner in the in the race for the title, but that's not happening. Uh, I wouldn't want to say it's anything anything to do with the players. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's just that time of the season when you undergo a slump. I mm -hmm. don't read anything too much in the in the in the bad result they're experiencing. Because Tasker started very badly. In the midway, they maintained, came up. Now they have gone into another slump. Again, it's the Western Steamer side that really struggled in the first half of the season. They are back now. They have won two matches on the throttle. Will Omino have it easy against Nzimbe? Uh, Omino beat Tasca three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Scored a first half goal. Defended mm -hmm. it so well. Although he says he should have scored more. But uh, now he, he comes at, uh, with a, a the East team has very good confidence. They beat Leopards last week. Mm -hmm. They deal with them in midweek. 
and uh, now they are facing a side that is maybe uh, is struggling, not maybe it's really yeah. struggling. Uh, they are seeing Gormai and Costa open the gap at the top. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but uh, Tasca is Tasca. They have the experience going into the match. I think they are favorites in the game. But you can never be so sure. I always say you can never be so sure against Tomino's team. You don't know what he has planned. Mm-hmm. He, he gets one goal, then you are done. He could <laughs> just kill off that game and yeah. use all the tactics to ensure he picks all the points. But to me, Tasca could rediscover themselves tomorrow. Remember, if you're joining us right now, it's the touchline on Y254, and we're discussing matters KPL match day 18. Several matches lined up in several parts of the country, and of course, joining us on set to dissect and take us through. The quality analysis of what's expected this particular afternoon is Kevin Taya, sports and uh, football a journalist in particular from futa.com alongside Ronnie Aloy, our resident panelist from Kenyan Star, just joining us right now to take us through what's lined up this particular af- afternoon with regards to Kenyan Premier League. And Nakumat FC will be taking on uh, Ulindi Stars. Nakumat occupying 11 spots on APL log, Ulindi Stars on third. And Ruben Stars will be playing at home at the Apra Stadium. Will not Matt FC probably put their predicaments aside what their sponsor is going through and pull a surprise against the big boys? I don't see a surprise. Ulinzi is winning that game. Uh, they have also lost two games to Zoya. One lost so cruel. They dominated the game on Wednesday, then considered a 94th minute goal. Uh, remember they beat Nakumat three weeks ago at Suruwaraka. And I don't see Nakumat pulling any surprise. They are losing that game. Tomorrow. What do you have to make of that particular clash fitting Nakumat against Ulindi Stars? Very, very tough one for Nakumat. The players, uh, there are rumors that the players on the technical bench are, are, are being odd monies and you know uh, money as they say in Swahili, pesos are being a role. So it's going to be very tricky for them, especially playing in uh, Ulindi's backyard. Very tricky for them and coming up against Waruru, the top scorer, uh, it's very impossible to get a result there. Is there something that happens between Benjamin Nyangweso and Stephen Waruru when those two are back together, more so when Nyangweso <laughs> is leading the side and Waruru is on attacking form? Ulindi seems to be unstoppable in that match. Uh, I think it's just trust me. The, uh, the coach trusts in me. Hmm. Uh, Waruru came back last, last year mid-season, but he didn't play much because it was Robert Matano who was uh, still the head coach. Okay, he was yeah. more of a sub, used more of a sub, like a substitute. Uh, this season we've seen uh, we've, we've seen Amanda work a coach that trusts him and yeah. yeah he's up and running and I don't think there's anyone who will come close to him in the Golden Boot race. Right. Waruru might be taking that one, but another game that you have to talk about keenly is in Zoya Sugar versus Posta Rangers. That's one of a kind of game because these sides have never met before. Posta defends well, scores, wins matches. Mzea comes all out. We c- you defend, you don't defend, we are here to play football. What do you make of that one? Uh, that will be a tough game. Mm. Uh, a young team versus an experienced team. Mm. And uh, so yeah, yeah, so yeah, goes all out. And if you see, they went all out against Posta uh, at Waraka two weeks ago in the first leg and lost and lost to a, t- a team that played for over 70 minutes with a man down. Mm. And Posta still went and to win the game. In fact, they mm. finished with nine men because two were sent off. Yes. Uh, tomorrow, they are, it's at Sudi. Uh, so he has only won once at the stadium and it was against Sudi this Wednesday. Uh, I see Posta will get at least a point from Sudi. It will be experienced by a young team. Uh-huh. There's that psychological beat that in Zoya, no, it's always tough playing mm. at home. Yes. And uh, I think... Um, Posters experience might prevail. Wow. Ronnie, Bernard Malala again is Sami Farms or Molo? I think uh, after getting a result against Tasca, because on your way to the title, one of the one of the uh, one of the concerns is that you need to win against your fellow title uh, contenders. Yes. And post uh, after winning against Tasca, then I think they've realized, look, we can win the title. So I think they'll go out uh, against Zoya in Sudi. Uh, Pamzo is an experienced coach. He knows that this is the time when the league is won. This is the time when you cannot afford to drop a point. When you're playing away, make sure you get at least a point. Mm-hmm. So I think he understands the league in and out, and he'll for sure get at least a point in, uh, in, in Sudi. And Thika United, under uh, former Kenya international Nicolas Muyoti, of course, the team consisting of 
young lads taking on Sofapaka tomorrow? Uh, again, Sofapaka did not. Uh, they they recruited at least fourteen players in the in the in the June uh, yes. transfer window, mm -hmm. and it really didn't have the impact that everyone expected. Uh, they brought in experienced players, really the likes of Maru Kasumba, Alifemi, mm -hmm. Mangoli, mm -hmm. but the the impact has not really been huge. So uh, Sofapaka has not been so convincing in the last few matches. They were very wasteful against Moroni last weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, against Thika. Not really a big match to watch, but I think Sofapaka will bounce back. Uh, after after dropping points against Moroni, Sam Simba was quite agitated. And although he'll sit out of this one, I expect John Barraza to rally up the boys and get the results against Thika. Uh, Kevin, immediately yeah. after their uh, partnership signature with uh, one of the betting firms, Betika, three-year deal, of course, of sponsorship, I spoke to Charles Okwemba, veteran, player of course having featured for both Tusk and FC during his days at Sofapak and he said probably blend of experience and youth uh, might be playing an integral factor as far as steering Sofapak to another top level and since then of course they have been axed alongside Moses Dubo Diambo. Do you think what they are going through the wolves are attributed to the departure of the experienced fellas at the side? I think uh, Sofapak made a very big mistake to dispose a good number of players that had played a very key role in keeping them in the league in 2016. You're talking about Polo Diambo, the likes of Charles Kokwemba, Moses Diambo. Uh -huh. uh, they played a very important role in ensuring that they don't go down when everyone had written them off. Uh, the experience was working well in the first leg. Yes. It was working well for them. Now they went and signed. It's not 14 players, they signed 16 players. Uh, when you watch Sofa Parker, they are not convincing at all, even if they get a point in, in a match. Uh -huh. They look disjointed because you look... Uh, New, you you fielded uh, around seven or six new players who did not feature for the team in the first leg. Then it's becoming a problem. And for tomorrow's game, the uh, the best they can get against Thika, I believe, is a point. I've watched Thika play, and I believe they can they have a chance of winning that game. They'll pick at least one point. And, and remember, as usual, you can be part of the program by joining our social media handles and keep your contributions coming. Of course, your feedback will be absolutely appreciated. At Wasike Maxwell. At Oso Roberts, at Touchline, Y254. What do you think about the KPL? Of course, Madara United will be taking on Sony Sugar. And Robert Kimanzi, former Rambe Stars tactician, has said that the three maximum points he picked up uh, during midweek clash will be vital to ensure that they avoid relegation. Ronnie, true? <laughs> uh, true. Ma ma things have not also been working out for Madara, really. Uh, I'd say they, they don't have the quality to match the big boys or, or even the quality to get into the top eight this season. But again, with that experience, I'm sure they can get a couple of uh, results here and there. Although Sony is, again, not a very uh, easy opposition to just write off. Uh, although something something has changed a bit in Madara, they, they were not performing really well in the last many matches but they've, they've, they've gotten a result recently so i think Kimanzi knows what he's doing and he'll get a result against sony kevin what do you think about mother united against sony sugar weekly if kazaya not seems like he's getting his first starting place at the slam boys uh, is mother trying to bring on board another new goalkeeper in the wonder kid uh, on Kasaya starting and not starting, I don't know what exactly happened to him because he's the, a goalkeeper to manage Kimanzi chest for six months. Well, that he wanted him in January 2016, he did not get him. Uh, he went f back for him in June and got him. Now, uh, two three matches into his Madara career, two mistakes, he found <laughs> himself in the bench. This season, when Boban, uh, Tom, Robert Mboya, I mean, left for Sharks, he was given the starting nod, made some errors, he was then sent back to the bench. As focus, I think uh, he does not have much left, much time left at Madare, and I won't be surprised if he's among the players that will be shipped out once the season comes to a close, because clearly, this, like the in the game against Leopards, he, he was almost sub substituted in the first half, uh, around 21st minute, but the coach let him finished the first half, then took him off when the second half was starting. This is the coach who was looking to win the game, and when he takes that ball decision to substitute a keeper who is not injured, you, you realize he does not have that much trust in him. It's just that, it's just because the window was closed. Probably could have been replaced. Uh, on tomorrow's game in Sony, uh, I think our end of Green Stadium was one a very formidable ground for Sony, but 
nowadays it's easier for teams to get points there. I saw Bandari went there, got three points. Kakamega Homeboys went there, got three points. Poster Rangers went there, got three points. Uh, Madara is not in their best form as well. We cannot say, okay, they got a win after a very long, their third win of the season, actually. Uh, tomorrow, um, both teams are not so well. Most likely, I see a draw or a Sony win. But no, not Madara win in, in our end. I don't see any win for them in our end. Well, that's some of the matches that will be happening this weekend. But I gotta bring you back to Kenyan football. But away from the field to what happened at the boardrooms was the financial budget at the Kenya Premier League was stuck. And now we've got some of the tournaments like the Kenya Premier League top eight, which will not be making its way into this season. Also, the Kenya under 20 league will not be making its way this season. What do you make of that budget that it crunch that is KPL is suffering now? Uh, it's it's common knowledge that when Supersport left the scene, then uh, something was to something was to change, and some areas were to suffer. Uh, that's starting to come out. We've seen KPL has come out boldly and said, "Look, we don't have the same money that we used to enjoy. We now have to be realistic with our budgets. We now have to slash a couple of things here and there." We've seen the under twenty tournament, the top eight, and a few other things being reduced. So I think it's all about an issue of money. Uh, but there's been a bit of uproar on social media over the past few days, especially with the budget, uh, with the numbers that came up uh, from KPL. It's no surprise because over the years since Supersport came into the scene, we really are not certain of how much money has been exchanging hands. Uh, speaking of money, uh, the last time I saw KPL released a financial report to the public was through their publication 2013-2014 yes. financial year. Since then, we've not seen any uh, financials to the public. So it still remains uh, a, a not so clear ground of how much money was being uh, given to KPL and how much money in total is being spent. Yeah. Kevin, what do you make of such uh, decisions and recommendations by KPL to scrap off some of the leagues in the name of, you know, KPL and a 20 tournament, which has been a big platform for Kenyans, especially the young footballers, yeah. to showcase their prowess. I think uh, people underestimated uh, the decision by Supersport to exit Kenyan football because they were financing, uh, okay, they, they were pumping all over 80 million a year. And I think part of that money is what went to KPL top eight, KPL under 20, and maybe the the KPL under 16 tournament that was being projected for this year. Uh, this was expected, and I think things could be more dire if their main sponsor, betting firm, decides otherwise, uh, decides to exit the, the, the scene as they have threatened to or have communicated. Uh, yeah, it was expected cost, cut, uh, cost cuttings have to happen. If you do not, you do not, you only work with the money you have. Now they do not have the, the portion that Supersport used to contribute. They had to slash so because, because they cannot slash the Kenyan Premier League. Kenyan Premier League is the main league. They have to do with what they have to. Sl they had to slash what they thought and uh, uh, yeah. Uh, globally, most most of the uh, most of the federations and even FIFA, uh, most of their money is come from TV TV rights. So in Kenya, you I think when the Super Sport left, then it was certain that money was was also no longer part of the game, like a huge chunk of, of the of the money was, was living. So I hope that moving forward, the, the, the stakeholders can do something to find a suitable sponsor, mm -hmm. so at least money can start flowing into the game. Otherwise, at the moment, the key sponsor is uh, a betting firm, and uh, against, there's, there's a bit of uncertainty with the, with the issue of, the, of gaming in this country. So I hope, Although Bamba, Bamba Sport is, is in the scene till December, I hope something can change. We can get a better sponsor who can pump in more money to help the clubs and the league. Let's now wind up, of course, due to public outcry, some follow and ardent viewer of the program in the name of Felix Okura is accusing us of partiality, saying that we've just uh, done analysis of various KPL fixtures, in leaving out FC Leopards against Bandari, probably some tired support of the team that is struggling. In top tier, don't know <laughs> stone hurling. Uh, a very, a in very your own submissions in a, a very a tricky, minute. a very tricky match because uh, a couple of key FC Leopards players out, Oburu is out, Isuza is out. Uh, so it's very tricky for FC Leopards. They've also had a very tight fixture, traveling back and forth, and also playing about 
three three matches in in about seven or eight days so it's very tricky for them uh although matano has really tried to set up the team so i t- at least expect lepers to get a draw from uh, from that match there paul gata will he pick up three maximum points against leopards which um, has only managed a point from their two previous matches under matano mm, yeah okay yeah Kata is a good coach uh, they played so well in the first leg against Leopards in Mombasa. But tomorrow, according to, uh, in my view, they have no chance tomorrow. Uh, Leopards have Alan Katarega back. And uh, that the fact that they beat them in the first leg and managed to get a point away at Stima, I, I feel it will spur the team against Bandari. And Leopards will prevail. Leopards will prevail. It's the touchline on Y25. We're coming to the end of that particular segment. Remember, up next... European matches and pre-season uh, friendlies alongside, you know, Community Shield lined up tomorrow at the evening. Arsenal against Chelsea Football Club. People will be joining us on set to take us through the same. Keep it here. And have a nice afternoon. It's the touchline on Y254.